Hey, what's going on guys? My name's Chopper, and welcome everybody to today's video, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty excited for this one. We're going to be talking about the 10 hardest skills to master in PUBG. So instead of being just a generalized tip video that if you have more than a couple hundred hours on the game, then you're already going to know this is going to go a little bit more in depth and to specific skills and details that you can use to really take you to a top tier player at this game. So sit back, relax, enjoy, and I hope this information does help. And if it does at all, I would really appreciate if you could leave a like rating on the video. It is absolutely free and it helps me out immensely and also make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel we're getting extremely close to a quarter million subscribers and when we hit that i've got some pretty cool videos and some stuff planned so uh stick around and get ready for that you're not gonna want to miss it but anyways with that all being said and out of the way let's go and get into the top 10 most difficult skills to master in pubg to make you a much better player all right fellas so coming in today at our number 10 spot is somewhat of a generalized tip but i'm going to get specific in it and what you can do to practically improve this as a skill and this is is going to be mastering your own movement. Now in PUBG, movement is one of the most important things that you need to get control of if you want to be a good player. And there's a lot of specific things you can do to improve that just mechanical movement. There's a thing that is in this game on all platforms, regardless of what you play on, called the bunny hop. It's otherwise referred to as the B hop. This essentially allows you to jump without ever having to be slowed down. The B hop is great for like making progress and just gaining ground against the zone and while still checking behind you, or you can check windows that maybe are a little bit elevated. It's just an overall amazing tool to use and a really good way to practice it is if you just jump into a game if you start hopping around and try to jump again as soon as your feet touch the ground you'll know when you've done it like there essentially is no delay in between each jump and it's a it's a really good skill to work on one of the other really important tools that you have in your movement arsenal is your crouch and you, you really got to take advantage of this especially when you're spraying the thing is a good tactical crouch not only makes your character model a little bit smaller so your your enemy might have a harder time hitting you but it really cuts down on your recoil as well and you'll notice it when, when you're spraying with and without crouching. It's something that it's good to get in the habit of, of. It's not really important to do it when you're single tapping too much, to be honest, but especially when you're spraying and, and when the situation calls for it. If your enemy isn't too elevated, you generally want to be crouching at all times. And of course, the last really important thing when it comes to movement is just using your peak correctly. This is something that I think is a very underrated skill to master because it can be the difference between winning a gunfight or losing, whether you're peaking or not. You know, when you understand the advantages and disadvantages that come with each peek and like how you should use it when you're fighting someone else it's just like it's an unbelievably important skill to know and it comes with the, just playing the game a lot i think okay now moving on coming at the number nine spot is compound crashing now i'm going to use this as kind of an umbrella term for just moving yourself from one area of the map to another and especially to a building that somebody else or another squad is already set up in. so how do you take those over normally it's not going to go well for you and your team if you just roll up on a set of buildings with no plan and no way on how you're going to get in and what windows you should push and everything like that so getting an understanding of how to push buildings that other teams may or may not already be set up in is a very important tool to use as a general rule of thumb when crashing a compound you really want to have like a certain window or a certain door in mind that you're going to invade it's usually like the weakest point of that entire compound and that's the easiest one to get in with the least amount of risk possible because generally speaking it's much easier for an enemy to keep you away than it is for them to flush you out once you're already in and so once you've done that that's half the battle your goal is really to have a plan when you're going to crash a compound which window are you specifically going to push and how are you going to follow through with it you've got to do both you can't have one without the other and if you fail to do one then you might end up dying and all of that would have been wasted time and for nothing now the way that you crash every each individual specific compound there's way too many so there's not one easy rule or one easy weak point that works for every building that's something you're gonna have to experiment with yourself and every building will give you different results but that's what's fun about it that's part of the learning process the point though that i would take home from this though guys is, is that if you're going to crash a compound it's better to have a plan even if it's a bad plan than not have one at all okay so coming in at number eight is an easy tip to like think about and, and it's something that you probably are already aware of but it's not necessarily something that everybody's good at this is spotting players now of course this is going to vary from person to person everybody's got their own settings and, and equipment that they use and whatever like obviously you want to have everything optimized that's not really the issue but the, the the practical thing that you can work on to get better at spotting players is knowing where to look finding players faster is is not just about like covering your entire screen with your eyeballs and being able to see everything at once. It's about looking in very specific locations of where players are likely to be. Now I get it. I know that sounds really simple, but but it really is something that's much easier said than done. Now, this is going to sound a bit random, but a really effective way I found to get better was after every match, I would go into theater mode and see where everybody was at at any given time. It really helped put into perspective how other players play and where they're likely to be given like the certain scenario. Once you do that, like player movements and 
and the and the decisions that they're going to make start to become a little bit more predictable, which is just like half the battle of spotting players. All right, moving on and coming in today at the number seven spot is using throwables right and you and using them effectively. Now, I think it's like one of those things where 60-ish percent of players don't even bother with throwables at all, or like maybe they'll hold one, but not even throw the entire match. And fair enough, like you want to rely on your gun skill. That's cool. But it, it is one of those things where if, if you have an arsenal of being able to use throwables and you're going to be much more effective as a player who can't do it. A good thing to know about practicing with these is just knowing which ones you should and shouldn't use. I'd say overall right now, the frag grenade is far and away the best throwable in the game. That might change because they, they're seeming to be a little bit OP right now in the game as far as like a lot of players are concerned. So I can see them maybe changing in the future. Molotovs are hard to use, but they can be effective if used right. Smoke grenades are great if you're able to like build walls and stuff for uh, to block off lines of sight. You can get yourself a res off or you can get a heal in while the smoke is still going in and you're completely like just a ghost. You're invisible to your enemy, completely covered from fire. And then stun grenades you can use to pop around a corner if somebody's trying to camp it out and, and you need to kind of tactically reposition around them. Every single one has its function. And if you're able to use them, then you're going to be a much more effective player than you otherwise would be. All right, ladies and gentlemen, coming in at number five is knowing your attachments. And listen, th this really comes down to a lot of game knowledge. And we're going to get into a little bit more detail about this later. But what you got to know is that there's an ungodly amount of attachments in this game. And there's an ungodly amount of ways to play with these weapons using specific combinations of these attachments. And I think, honestly, that's a really good reason as to why PUBG has survived as long as it has, because the game is so replayable as there's an infinite amount of ways you can play with different weapons and different variations of those weapons. So the gameplay always feels fresh, in my opinion. Now, the thing is, practically, if you do want to get better at using attachments and what to use on your weapons, and I, I recommend just do some research, studying these and playing around with them, getting your hands dirty and really getting to know each attachment inside it out as much as you possibly can for each one is going to not, not only increase increase your game knowledge, but increase your experience and, and make you a better suited player as compared to most people in the lobby. All right, guys. Now, number five, I'm going to give it to securing and keeping airdrops. Now, this this applies for like the regular airdrops that come in match to match, but also flare gun airdrops that you can call in yourself. Just mathematically speaking, if you chase drops and get the weapons and the armor out of it, you're going to win more gunfights and likely win more. The players that will never chase drops and, and just avoid them like the plague are, are still able to win, but are much less likely likely than somebody who has chase drops, has a level three helmet and a vest and, and also a really sick gun out of it and everything like that. I will say that flare gun airdrops are much harder to defend and secure than regular ones as you paint a really big target on yourself and people obviously know that you're in the vicinity. So it, it's much harder to cover, but if you can do this effectively, then uh, you're going to win a lot more and you'll, you'll also end up with a lot more kills per match. An easy way to get better at this is just practice and also trying to increase your game awareness. Those are the two biggest things that I think are going to help you out the most when it comes to that. Okay, now coming in at the number four spot is again, a, a generalized tip, but I'm going to get specific about how you can improve it. This is just your overall positioning, and, and that can mean where you are in relation to the blue zone and how the safe zone is getting smaller and smaller, where you're going to be in the map at any given time, but also like your physical position when you're gunfighting. So when it comes to the zone and like how you're going to move in the map, like it's good to know exactly how much damage the blue zone is going to do so you can figure out how long you can stay around if you need to finish off a gunfight or if you need to hang around for a little bit longer, and it'll help you plan ahead for how the map is going to move as well. And when it comes to positioning yourself in the safe zone, I really think that it's not so important to, to have the outlines of the safe zone, like really that's where you want to be. It, it's good to have an idea of the terrain in front of you, even if it's inside the safe zone rather than just hanging on the edge of it. I really think it's better to be like almost dead center of the safe zone, but like have a really good position instead of being in a very predictable spot otherwise. And then when it comes to actual gunfighting and, and positioning that you should be in for each one, this really comes down to this is fully game knowledge, like what angles you can hold, what compounds give you the best sight on other players that are trying to approach you, which ones are the easiest to defend, all this kind of stuff you can only really get through hours played, I'd say, like, this this, this is an experience kind of thing, there's no fast track to get it, but that's what I would tell you to do. Alright, now, ladies and gentlemen, getting into our top three, this one is going to be map familiarity, and this segues really well from the last one, as this is simply, you can only get this through hours played, there is no easy way to really study a map without just getting involved and getting experienced by being in it. Now, all the maps in PUBG are so expansive and so intricate detailed and designed that it's physically impossible to know by heart every detail and every angle and every hill on every single map. It's just it's just not even a human thing that you can do. But the closest you can get to being familiar with all the maps is automatically going to put you at more of an advantage than any player, even if they're maybe better at gunfighting than you, you're going to be in a better position because you just know the map. So in my opinion, I think it is really useful if you want to get more familiar just to go in either in a theater mode or just keep playing and, and just study the map itself and maybe get familiar with areas that you've never really been to. 
mentioned before and figure out how you could play those well. All right, ladies and gentlemen, winding down here and coming in today at number two is going to be getting good at reading sound. Now, this is just as important as your visuals in PUBG when you're playing the game. Getting good at reading sound is, I'd say, the single-handedly most underrated skill in this game if you want to become a very good player. For example, picking up on a really minuscule sound can be the difference between a win and a loss because it'll like enforce you to make different decisions in that way. Being able to differentiate like specific weapon sounds from each other is also extremely important if you, if you want to just have more in-game awareness, I'd say. And plenty other things that sound becomes important for, like visual and audio cues are the way that you can become a good player. If you have one without the other, you, you could play PUBG blind and maybe even pick up a couple of kills if you if you were that good at picking up on 3D audio, that sort of thing. Obviously, it's not practical. You don't want to play this game if you're blind, but if you can employ both and you use both effectively, you'll be extremely dangerous on the battlefield. Okay, now finally, ladies and gentlemen, coming today at the number one spot of the most impossible and really difficult skill to learn in this game is a full weapon mastery. And I'm saying it's impossible because technically speaking, it is. You could be the most experienced player to ever touch all of the weapons in PUBG. Like nobody has more hours on these weapons than you. But the thing is, there still is a little bit of a random element to all of these guns. So it is physically impossible. Even if you master out all of the attachments and in every case, you eliminate all of these variables, it's still impossible to fully master every weapon. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try, though. Just because you can't be perfect with a weapon doesn't mean you shouldn't try to improve and become dangerous with them. When you really think about it, with all of the weapons in the game and all of the attachment variants, there are literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of different ways to play each individual weapon, and, and that's mind-blowing. So that's why you cannot fully master it. There's, there's just too many ways that a gun can potentially perform, and there's too many weapons that have different variants of how they can perform. So just getting hours played and, and practicing with all of the guns, but figuring out as best you can to master all these as close as possible will make you the most dangerous player out there. But ladies and gentlemen, those are going to be the top 10 most difficult skills to master in this game. If any of these tips helped you, if there's something that you wanted to know about and I and I gave you a practical tip on, on how to improve on it, I'd really appreciate if you let me know which one that was and what I can do uh, in the future to help you improve on those better. But I hope this did help. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like rating. Subscribe if you are new to the channel as well before you go. If you haven't already, and go check out my second channel as well, which is now linked inside the description. You can subscribe over there for more content. I'd appreciate that very much if you want to help me out. That channel is getting close to hitting 10,000 subscribers, and all of the supporters over here have been uh, showing some love on there. So thank you guys so much once again. But have a great rest of your day. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Have a good one, and peace out.